thank you guys. I mean, it's a bit weird because I'm in a room and I can see you, but I can't see myself. So it's a bit, it's a bit strange. So just give me a few minutes to adjust if you know what I'm saying. But can you all hear me, see me? I mean, all good? Wow. Technology. Here we are. 2022. And basically we are in different geographic locations and yet we can communicate. And this was unthinkable when I started my journey in 2005. So how many of you want to know how I started my journey and why I did it? No, honestly, because up to now, you know, certain classmates of mine who I studied in the States with, in the US and, you know, very smart people basically ask me, are you still doing it? Are you still doing it? I said, doing what? And he said, the thing. I said, what thing? No, that thing that you had said about, that thing. So let's talk about the thing. Now, what is the thing? I don't know. Does anyone know what the thing is, actually? Is it some, some emoji with, you know, horns on the top or a fuzzy ball or something like that, you know, because a lot of my friends up to today still call it the thing, Dave's thing. So now from the thing, it has become Dave's thing. Dave's thing is now growing. <laughs> Many of them talk about that. And I am laughing my ass off because I can't understand because the thing never changed from day one. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is a lot of people have doubt about an industry. See, understand that every industry in the beginning there's doubt. Then slowly it goes to acceptance. And when they see it working, and then the herd comes in, herd mentality. You understand what I'm saying? So if you look at cryptocurrency, what is it? Same thing. It was the thing. Everyone said, Are, kya hai? Kuch nahi hai. On an app, you can basically just, you know, buy some stupid, you know, virtual currency. But today the Indian government is is taxing it with 30%. So aren't they taxing the thing? Think about it. You know, the last budget, I don't know whether you guys, you know, can, you know, keep up with economics, but I do, although I don't live in India anymore. All digital currencies are now taxed. The government is not sure whether it's legal, but they are taxing it. How does that sound? It sounds like India, actually. I will take your money, I will take your tax, and we are still checking it out, but it's okay. Carry on. So remember the first thing about the industry that you are part of. Do it with pride. Because all of you, are part of an industry that is being, which has been accepted globally for 60 to 70 years. Cryptocurrency has been around for how long? 15 years? You know, less actually. Maybe, maybe 10, 12 years, I don't know. Yeah? Maybe less than 10 years also in some cases. And, and today, it's the norm. So the first question is, how did I get into the... 
How many of you want to know how I got into the business? You sure? So I'm sitting on my ass in Hong Kong, running my hedge fund, and my one of my closest friends named Paul basically got back to me and basically said, listen, I've got this new thing. So I said, what thing is this? He's saying it's like, you know, direct selling, multi-level marketing thing. And we're all going to become rich. Now understand my friend Paul was a duffer in school. Absolute duffer. He failed one year also in high school. Then he became a pilot. And I used to manage his portfolio for him. So whatever he earned, you know, a certain percentage went into, like you're all investing in SIPs, huh? Systematic Investment Plan. That many of your RMs, you know, get you. But I'm not the sales guy. I'm the guy who actually does the investments. Okay. So I went and I saw the plan. I looked at it and the first thing that got me, I said, this is a scam. Simple, plain and simple, it's a scam. And he asked me, why is it a scam? I said, boss, how can everyone earn the same amount of money, no matter how high you go or low you go, you know, you know sorry. First level, fifth level, tenth level, hundredth level, whatever. So he told me, he said, I don't know how it's not a scam, but it's not a scam. I, then I said, it's a pyramid scheme. How many of you thought it was a pyramid scheme when you heard the first plan? Come on, be honest. So I asked him, how is it not a pyramid scheme, Paul? Come on, wake up, yeah. You're being duped over here. You're being, you know, scammed. So he said, I don't know why it's not a pyramid scheme, but I know the guy who told me whatever it's not, he said it's not a pyramid scheme. I said, Paul, based on what basis can you, can you do something that you don't know anything about? Come on, man. If you want to throw your money into something, that's fine. But you're asking other people to do it. There's a moral responsibility, right? And that's when he told me, he said, Dave, you're smarter than me. Do your research. So I went to Hong Kong, where I lived. I'm still a Hong Kong resident. Although I'm in Dubai right now, for 24 years I've been a Hong Kong resident. And in Hong Kong, you cannot mess around. Let me tell you, the laws are very, very, very strict. If they do an investigation on you, and if you basically, you know, fall foul of the law, they will shut you down in like 72 hours. They will ask you to shut your entire business down. Your business license will be cancelled. You will be asked to leave the country. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> One second. I have a sore throat. Back. I did my research. Not just me, my whole team, because I have a whole team of, of analysts who are basically great companies, because we are a hedge fund. Uh, can you guys hear me properly or is my mic too far from my chin? Yeah, yeah. okay, great. Yeah. So understand that the journey for me started much like you. Somebody close to you or somebody you know basically just called you up one day I did the research I did the math I went to the office in Hong Kong which was three streets away from my office 
and I basically asked them, how is it possible for everyone to earn the same amount? And then they spoke to me about rhythm, the max out. And then I was mathematically convinced. Now, there's a difference between being mathematically uh, convinced and being convinced. Do you know the difference? So, mathematically, I can show you a game on paper. 1 becomes 2, 2 becomes 4, 4 becomes 8, and you'll be convinced. But the essence of the company is not just mathematics. It's, does it make sense? What are you buying? That was my next product research. And they gave me a whole thing about how they were launching the vacations that time. Launching the vacations. And they were launching the watches. So what you're seeing today was just a dream back then. If you know what I'm saying. Many of the products you see today, the air purifier, the water filter, the vacations, was nothing more than a vision in 2005. And that is where my journey began. And then I started to explore the industry. And I realized that multi-level marketing has created the most amount of millionaires And I was shocked. I was totally shocked. I, I said, I, I, I can't believe it. So hero, I mean, zero to hero is basically what multi, multi-level marketing is. And I was in a state of shock at that point in time. I saw the stats. I checked it out. Many of the IV... Ivy League schools were actually offering courses for this industry. So that was my entry into the industry. And honestly, back then, I'm sure your uplines have asked you also, what is your what is your dream? What do you want from this business? How many of you guys have been asked this question? Come on, let's have some fun. Everyone, okay, bolo. I want the sun, I want the moon, I want the stars. How many of you want the sun, the moon and the stars? Come on, be honest. I want to win the lottery. And I want to be financially free. Now, you know what my dream was? So, I'm sitting over there like a... You have, you have to understand, I'm a hardcore finance guy. Okay? Hardcore finance. I don't get fooled by, you know, people promising me stuff. Because every time you go for a, an investment conference, somebody is going to you know, give you a bunch of projections which can either be realistic... Or very optimistic. You understand what I mean. So if you go right now on uh, on Google, some people will say that Bitcoin will go to zero, and some people will say Bitcoin will go to hundred thousand dollars. Some people will say that in ten years it will be a million dollars. Who you believe? The guy who said it goes to zero. Or the guy who said hundred thousand, or the guy said million dollars. So I don't take anyone else's word for it. I do it myself. I do my own calculations, which is what I did. The guy said, "So what do you want? Dave? What is your dream?" So at that point in time, I basically uh, used to send my mother two thousand US dollars a month. I used to send my father 2,000 US dollars a month because my parents are not together for a long time. So, my karma bhumi or whatever, my karma was basically 
$4,000 a month has to go from Hong Kong to India just to support my parents and my family. I said, Chalega, $4,000 a month is a good thing. So let me, if I can earn $4,000 a month, which is $1,000 a week, which is not even, you know, today I laugh at myself. I talk about $1,000, you know, you know, dollars a week. And at that point in time, I said, if this business can give me that, at least that portion of my financial burden will be lifted from my shoulders. I'm sure many of you have also financial responsibilities, right? And at that point in time, that was mine. So I worked towards it. So basically, the first question was, how do I get there? So it's mathematically very simple. 12,000 BV on my cash out leg will give me $1,000 a week. Mom and dad are looked after. Everyone's happy. I'm happy. That's my goal. But it was not happening for the first few months until I met our uplines, the titans, V partner, Arun George, V partner, Mahindra Kumar, V partner, Cherry and Matthew, AVP, Manoj, you know, AVP Balaji. And I had a coffee with Mahindra Kumar, I still remember, at one of the trainings, just like this. And, but it, it was a physical, you know, you know, training. So he said, what do you want? He said, of course, I want to max out and everything. He said, but actually, I just want to make $1,000 a week to pay for my family thing. So he said that, you know, Dave, I'm very impressed. This is a very realistic goal for you. So I want you to basically first focus on one check a week. Every week you must earn money. Whether it is $250 or $1,000. Earn every week. That is your first step in the right direction. Now, how simple is this advice, guys? Think about it. It's the simplest advice you can like every journey, no matter how long, starts with a simple step, right? A humble step forward. And he said that you have to ensure that you earn this check every week, either through your effort, only through your effort. Don't rely on the team to do it for you. So either be part of doing a downlines plan or closing or your own plan and your own close. And this conversation I had, I remember on the 10th of 10th of December, 2005, you know, with him at the Meridian Hotel in, in Pune, which is in India. And by God's grace, I got my click and since then till now, by God's blessings and God's grace, Dev Adwani has earned a check every single week for the last 16 years, minimum one check a week. You understand what I'm saying guys? So first let's start with absolute basics. Now the question is why you want to do this? What is the industry? It is what it is. It's e-commerce. Got married to network marketing. That's what QNET is, right? Correct or not? So basically, let's say you married outside your community. And now the babies are basically mixed, you know? 
you didn't marry in your own community. If you are Punjabi and you married a South Indian, then the babies, I don't know what they are. You understand? They are mixed breed because I am also mixed breed. I am half Catholic, half Sindhi. Vadwani is from father's side. Catholic is from mother's side. It's a good. It's a good mix. It's okay. So, the question is why? Now let me just share with you. Many years ago, I spoke about this on the Vicon stage. On the Vicon stage, I spoke about something called the future of what is artificial intelligence and is technology good or bad for humanity? How many of you think it's good for humanity? Put your hands up. So AI, you know AI, right? Everyone's talking about AI now. So when I spoke about AI several years ago, people thought I had flown in from Mars or Venus or some other planet. You know, kya baat kar rahe? AI ke baare mein. But today, everything is based on that. All the apps you have and everything you do is based on artificial intelligence. Do you realize that? Do you realize that or not? And this is one very fundamental thing I want to share with you. Basically, automation, technology, AI are things that a human being cannot compete with on any level. Think about it. Can you? Today, do you actually uh, go to your bank and transact? I hope not. Everything is done online. How many jobs got lost? Think about it. How many jobs got lost? How many jobs got lost because of the banking app? Then you have WhatsApp. When's the last time you went to the post office? For me, it's been decades. I remember back in the day, I used to go with my mother and my father and we used to post the Christmas and Diwali cards. Buy the stamps, put and put it in the mailbox. Today you have virtual cards, right? And you send email messages and you send WhatsApp to everyone. What happened to Hallmark? Hallmark now went online also, no? Virtual cards. You want me to go on? I can carry on all day long. So back in the day, there used to be a three-man cockpit on the aeroplane. So be a pilot, the captain, first officer, and the engineer. Today, the whole engineering section is run by a computer. It's a two-man cockpit. Only two men up front, left and right. That's it. What happened to the stockbroker? When I started my career, I used to call and I used to buy and sell shares. Today, <laughs> you don't, you start laughing, right? Everything is online or not? So an app, buy my sales, buy shares, sell shares, book my profit, goes back to my bank account. Stockbroking gone out, out the window. Now let me get into robots. 
Today robots are doing surgery. You know this or you don't know this? All this information I'm giving you is from the World Economic Forum. Please go online and check because you Google everything in your life. Before you go take a piss also every day you go and you, you, you know Google. Is it safe for me to go and take a piss? So please check all this out. So this is one side. Automation, robotics and artificial intelligence. Which are ravaging jobs. Yeah. Now the second thing is what is the wealth distribution of the world? Do you know? Let me tell you World Bank and IMF research shows that 1%, the top 1% of the planet owns 99% of everything. A classic case in India, the Ambani's. So you think that's a scary stat? Is that a scary stat? When you know that 1% owns 99%. Through holding companies, other companies, subsidiaries, all this is corporate structure. Everyone seems very quiet right now. See no reaction from most people. We'll go check it out. Now you know what's worse than that. Out of the 1%, so what is 1%? Let's say 1% is 7 billion people, approximately. Okay? 1% is 70 million. So 70 million out of 7 billion own 99% of everything. Now the next stat is even scarier. This is World Economic Forum data. Out of the 70 million, when I attended a breakout session online on the World Economic Forum was 42 people owned half of the world. Half. Can you imagine 42 people owning half of the world? Sorry, I've gone past my... I'm in a studio right now, so. And today it has dropped to under 25 people. So just understand the, the disparity in wealth distribution of the planet. And then we have so I live in Dubai, Shipra lives in Dubai, Neeraj lives in Dubai. Some of your uplines live in places where there's no tax, right? Is this too much or what? Is this too high, high funder for you guys? No, be honest because I can, I can bring it down to your level. So basically, the first thing is with artificial intelligence, with automation, with software, you have a job market that is shrinking. You understand what I'm saying? And you have a population that is growing. Now you tell me, do you need to be an economist? to figure out what's going to happen. I think about the new generation. 
And I'm wondering what jobs are they going to get? It's actually a very scary thought, you know. A job market that's shrinking and a population that's growing. Kya hoga fir? What will happen? I still remember in when I did my first economics class, I think it was grade 11 of college after high school. They said it's supply and demand. The economy runs on supply and on demand. So here we have an industry that runs on consumption. Consumption is basically, you need clean air, you need clean water, you need all. Everyone goes on holiday at some point in time. Then we have watches, jewelry, all this other stuff. Okay, that's fine. But three basic pillars. Women want to look beautiful, skin care. Clean air, clean water, which basically saves you money for the uh, the mineral water, and then you want a good holiday. Now, if you can earn money from these things, if you apply your mind, within three to five years, you can become financially free. Now, what is financial freedom? That's my next thing. We talk about financial freedom. Am I boring you guys or what? With, this is like a talk, you know, Shipra, first of all, got me out of bed very early this morning, which I'm very upset about. And then she asked me to speak about the most boring subject. I would like to talk to you about dreams, flying first class, doing this, doing that. But she said, no, 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 come and talk about the industry, please. So this is like a talk, half economics. This is not very inspiring. It may scare the shit out of half of you. If it does, if you are scared after what I just shared with you, you are in a very good mind space. Very good, because you should be scared. Because what I want to share with you next is the most scary part, which nobody knows about it. It's called the cancer of the economy. So today, we live in a world, everyone has a number. True or not? A number in the head. Are, if I'm earning this much, I'm sorted. Right? So my mother was a flight stewardess. My father was a flight steward. And then we basically did some masti and then I came along and then my mother basically had two kids, me and my sister. And then my father carried on working till the day he retired with Air India. And when he retired, now he's in his 70s, so 20 years ago, he had a pension of 1 lakh and 12,000 rupees. That was not bad back then, huh? 20 years ago, think, 1 lakh and 12,000 rupees. Chalega. He's looked after. Today, what is worth, what is 1 lakh worth today? So slow. Think about it. So what is a hidden See, everyone in this world, whether you, you live in India or you live in Dubai and you think you're paying no tax or you live in Monaco or you live in Switzerland or you live in the Cayman Islands or you live in Channel Islands and you think you're some big dude that doesn't pay tax as opposed to India where 35% tax. What is the one tax that everyone on this planet pays?
even if you have in, in a no tax zone, it's called inflation. Everything goes up in price. Today, the US has basically announced seven and a half percent inflation. The United States of America. Go online and check everything I say. Please double check. So basically, everything that you are buying is costing more, not less. Is your income in any other industry growing at that level? It's my question to you. Are you getting a bonus, an increment or whatever to match the inflation? Then you have jobs that are shrinking. One day your boss will tell you, listen man, you're lucky to have your job. Don't, don't, don't complain. Don't ask for a promotion, don't ask for a raise. So I hope I've shared with you why this industry makes sense. Because today you're your own business owner and today you have the option. QNET is nothing more than a platform or you can call it a, a cow that you know gives you milk every week based on your effort. Now you want to focus your effort on milking the cow or you want to focus your you know effort on being a slave and one day they may give you a pink slip and say boss you are now redundant because you know what we have a new software that that's coming or this AI and you're not required anymore. That's one. Second is, is your income going to grow to match inflation? I'm talking to you as a banker now, not as an upline, not as a networker. Think about these things, guys. This is not a joke. This is reality. And one day it will come and give you a Slap on the face. I heard you. I hope you heard that. Ek thappad milega. Jor se milega. I'm going to leave you with one thought only. With Dato Sri himself shared with me many years ago. He said, do this when you don't need it. Because you never know when you will need it. This is your insurance policy. Whatever you are building, we are the only company. I am so the proudest thing I am. First of all, we do tourism. We do charity. We do all that. Okay? Some people say, Are, are you know, this is a, a, pub, a you know, publicity stunt and something like that. Okay? Charity there are TK. All companies do charity. Chalega. So okay. No problem. I take that online. But do business when you don't need it because you know when you will. One day it will happen. I have been so the 2000 dot com bubble, the 2008 meltdown, the pandemic now. People have lost jobs, correct or not? People have taken pay cuts, yes or, yes or no? Has QNET ever sent you an email telling you Oh, due to the pandemic, your commission is going to be cut by 20%. And when things recover, we will get back to it. Because some people have taken a 50% cut also on pay. Either that or you lose your job. Have we ever 
asked you to take a haircut on your income. No, the worst thing we've done, and we cried about it because I'm part of the whole process internally. I'm not just your upline, I'm also part of the corporate structure. Is say, guys, supply chain management in the world is a problem. Your product will be delayed. I'm sorry. But in Paisa, to aata hai na Tuesday ko. Check your Quest account; it's there. So I don't know about you, but I thank my lucky stars that I'm with the right people, with the right company, 23 years old, the right products, right opportunity. This is my thought on a Sunday morning. And I'm not feeling well, but I'm still sharing this, you know, you know this with you very passionately. So basically, we we are with the right company, 23 years old. You cannot, you know, the 80-20 rule, right? 80% of all businesses fail in the first, you know, two years, and then the next two years, out of the 20, 80% fail again. So it's actually 90. 964 and then you have companies like Nokia and BlackBerry that have failed after decades also we've been around for 23 years you think it's luck you think it's luck they've come after us right authorities regulations laws abhi tak khada hai na bhai bhen Right company, right products, can't go wrong with clean air, clean water and affordable vacations and then luxury, you know, you know, you know products and the right opportunity. These three things. Now I'm going to tell you one more thing. I don't care whether it's QNet or whether it's Microsoft or whether it's Apple or whether it's Tesla. I don't care. There is no perfect company. I'm telling you the truth. There is no perfect company. There is no perfect product. And there is no perfect opportunity. It is what you make of it. I'm telling you God's truth. Because somebody will come up with a new electric car that may be better than Tesla, but you think Tesla is going to quit? Somebody may come up with some new software. You think Microsoft is going to quit? They will innovate, and they'll get better. So I want you to know that you're with the right company that offers the right products with a fantastic opportunity, and you're in the right industry. You're blessed. You're with the right people. Now it's up to you what you want to make of it. So this is my very logical, factual module that I basically wanted to share with you why this industry makes sense on every level: job shrinking, population growing, inflation. Which your normal business or job will not deal with, and the last was the company, the products, the opportunity. So I wish you a blessed Sunday, guys. Stay safe, stay well, and hopefully we can meet in person sometime soon. 